all there. Thanks for joining us and a very good evening to you. If you are around Nigeria and to other parts of the world, I say bonjour. Uh, and uh, that's the only one I can say for now. <laughs> it is a leaders and the lead and here from uh, the main studios of Equa Television Africa. My name is Donald Weze and I have uh, Valia Gado in the house. Always my pleasure to be here. Well, uh, to the viewer, we, we field guests who are leaders in their own right to discuss issues that border on leadership and uh, also proffer solutions to even those who are being led because before someone becomes a leader, definitely he would have been led by someone before. So tonight we have a guest who is going to share light on some of the uh, issues that border on leadership from his uh, primary constituency, which is uh, <coughs> the pharmaceutical industry, and then we can now go on into uh, leadership in the in, in the faith that is in the church, and uh, as a father, as, uh, as a leader of thought in his uh, community. But before we go on to the business proper, I'll ask Valia to do justice to the gentleman that is with us tonight. All right, very well, Duna. Thank you so much for this opportunity. And our guest is pharmacist Jonathan Manya Dogo. Pharmacist Jonathan Manya Dogo began his educational pursuit at SIM Primary School, Kano. He then proceeded to Lautai Government Secondary School, Gumel. Jiga State, after which he continued his educational pursuit at College of Arts and Science, Zaria Kaduna State, then ABU Zaria, that's a popular Ahmed Beno University, Zaria Kaduna State, where he started his uh, pharmaceutical career educationally, and he is right now the consultant community pharmacist, and um, he has or would I say an academic qualification in theology. He doubles not just as a pharmacy, but also a, let's say pastor to be <laughs> or pastor in the making. He is, um, he has obtained the Equa Theologi Theological Seminary. He has obtained, I beg your pardon, he has obtained a postgraduate diploma in theology from the Equa Theological Seminary in just plateau state nigeria i'll quickly run through the his leadership career at uh, while serving as pharmacist at different uh, capacity pharmacist jonathan maya dogo joined the equa central pharmacy limited in 2010 particularly he worked as a production pharmacist stroke manager between the years 2010 to 2018 then he was appointed as the managing director and the chief executive officer at, in may 2018 to date that was last year he has worked as a, he has worked as a hospital community and I mean, administrative pharmacist and pharmaceutical industry pharmacist of interest to, to him is his 17 years of rural communities practice where he served as a consultant community pharmacist. I present to you on the platform of the leaders and the led pharmacist Jonathan Maya Dogo, farm and pastor <laughs> in the making. Thank you very much, Gavalia. Good evening, uh, viewers. Thank you for this opportunity to be on this wonderful program and great TV. All right, uh, pharmacist, uh, it's, it's really interesting to, to have you tonight because we have a pharmacist who, who is also uh, an administrator, mm -hmm. a manager, and then he is also an elder in the uh, local church. How do you marry all these uh, various positions together? What's your secret? And uh, I, I, I make here to say, you still look young. Well, I would say the leadership <laughs> role. How does it manage to juggle the leadership oh, yes. role at different levels? Well, thank you so much. Um, I think it started from a very young age. Maybe I want to return thanks to the church for preparing one mm -hmm. for this kind of role because the church brought me to believe that I derive my strength and inspiration from the scriptures. Okay. And the Bible is my strength. 
And you know, there is no better where you see better leadership mo role models like in the Bible. And then to make it better for me, my profession is such that as a pharmacist, you are trained to be a manager immediately you graduate. Mm -hmm. So you are given lots of training. When you need 40% to pass other subjects, when it comes to management and accounting, you need 60% to pass. So the profession prepares you to be a leader mm -hmm. immediately you graduate. But above all, I think what enables me to be able to handle all this is one's dependence on God. Mm. Dependence on God. Mm. And uh, I, I, I like that angle because uh, you find that uh, in, in some of the theorems of uh, leadership mm. that uh, I have come across, uh, most often a time, people don't talk about having to depend on God for whatever it is they are going to be facing. A lot of people just want to go in there and say, okay, I have a master's degree in human resource management, I have a PhD, or even a professorial position. Mm -hmm. And so they just uh, go in there, and then before you know it, they start making all kinds of mistakes mm -hmm. and creating more confusion. So from your own uh, perspective, uh, would you subscribe that uh, leaders must have something much more than academic qualification so that they can get through whatever responsibilities they have? Sure. Um, maybe, you know, psychologists and sociologists will tell you they, they, they have the most difficult field in life mm -hmm. because the most difficult thing is you can't predict man mm -hmm. even for the next se second. Mm -hmm. Sometimes even yourself, you, you wonder how you do some things. You get involved in some things and you start asking yourself mm -hmm. how you got involved in that. And that is why I believe, yes, education is very good. It sharpens you. It prepares you. But you see, who created man is God. Mm -hmm. And it's only God that knows man. Mm -hmm. And that is why the God factor is very important in leadership. Because as you leave your home to go to the office, even as, as a leader at home, you don't even know the next second. But when you abide mm -hmm. in the presence of the Lord... He reveals a lot of things to you, and he guides you. And you find out that you are just handling the issues as if you knew they were coming. Mm. And that is why the God factor is very important. Certificate education, very wonderful, very great. But by the time, and let me explain why I'm saying the education is very important. A leader that has no Christ gets confused. And sometimes you see leaders that even attempt suicide, leaders who give up. I think not too long, one of the Western worlds, a leader committed suicide when he couldn't cope with the drop in the economy. I don't know whether it's Germany also, mm. where this COVID-19 issues. But for the child of God, when those issues are getting out of order, you just get to your knees and you find out that the, God is, the Lord is revealing mm. solutions to you and he guides you. And that is why I'm saying depending on God for a leader is not an option. It is, uh, in fact, a prerequisite yes. of the office or the, the position one is leading. George yeah. Uh, Valia. Yeah, based on experience, I, you seem to have a soft side for youth. You seem to have great interest in those young ones. Mm -hmm. How have you been able to, and you were once, talking about your leadership position, you mm -hmm. were once an elder in charge of... Uh, an elder first for mm. the first three years. Mm. You were an elder in charge of, um, uh, the, you were in the secretary of the church, I yes. remember. Mm. Okay, and then later you became an elder in charge of um, Christian education. education. And you're still, you're currently serving as an elder in charge of Christian education. Yes. So how are you able to manage youth, to lead youth? Well, the young person is a very interesting person. They are very dynamic but also very, um, very difficult to understand. So, but what I have found out is when you get close to them, you know, they also help you mm -hmm. to appreciate you. And so it has been easy because you just come to their level, come down to their level, try to use their language. It's not easy, actually, but you come to their language, uh, bros, what's up? 
uh, you know, those kind of things. And it amazes them that you are speaking their language. So they get close to you. You get to understand them. And above all, it gives you an opportunity to actually add value to their lives. I think that is what gives me joy that I desire to really get closer to the young people. Okay, let's have you cite an example. Okay. Um, I think when I started working at Equa Central Pharmacy, it was very interesting. If you know that company, it has a lot of doors, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> and so when I came in first, okay, guys, it's time to do production. They will say, okay, sir. Guys, <laughs> okay. And they will just disappear. <laughs> and you know, you go around looking for them. You enter one office, you find out that it's a close. You can't go beyond it. And then it was difficult. Okay, come. What do you think we'll do tomorrow? You know, I was thinking, let me carry them along. But it's like they were not used to it. Mm -hmm. So they would say, I don't know. So I now look at one of them that was very young and dynamic. And I look at him, I look at him. And the next day I came, I said, bro, how now? And you know, before you know, we are connecting. Mm -hmm. And then we became very close. And I could push them to even do work beyond yeah, what no they are meant to do. Mm -hmm. And by the side, I had him complaining that, Kai, this Oga can push you so hard. But he's also nice. What do you do? You know, mm -hmm. so those are some of the things you find out that uh, if I had bossed them around, mm -hmm. I, they would still be dodging. And, you know, it took me time to know the doors, which one leads to which place. And before you know it, and there are times that he will come and say, look, oh God, the demands are so many. Mm. Can we do two, three productions? Mm. So they are now the ones offering. I'm coming, no, but can you cope? Yes, we can cope. And he will say, look, we, I know they can cope. Yes. But, you know, because it's coming from them, they own it. And it's a lot easier. So that's the unique thing about young people. When you value them and make them look significant, you can get anything done. So I, I can deduce leadership styles of friendship, yeah. of listening, yes. and also of um, giving parity to a set of people. Sure, Do sure. Want? Yes. Um, <clears throat> I want to, I don't want to get too academic, <laughs> but I want to, I want to, uh, you, you, you mentioned uh, a push, and I, I said, push? Okay. Now, um, Management by objectives, which mm. is uh, one of the, the, the major theorems of uh, mm. administration and management. Uh, there is the push and the pull mechanism. Mm. Have you been able to, uh, to get these two extreme positions together, particularly in the organization where you are leading? Yes. Um, for me, um, what I consider very key and important is to value your work, mm. make them feel very important. Yeah. And um, when that is there, well, there are times that you may have to push. Mm. There are times there mm. because you have a goal, you have a target. Well, as a leader, you are the one that will sustain the focus. Yeah. You are the one that will ensure the organization is on course at any point in time. So there are times that complacency may come in, yes. you push. But what I have found the best is to actually make, and for our own kind of business, actually everybody is important. Mm. Because I was told so many years back, the Pharmacies Association Council of Nigeria shut down Equa Central Pharmacy because the cleaning was not properly done. Mm. Mm. So mm. I value as much as low as the cleaner mm. in the company. Sometimes I give them the uh, respect as much as even they are the ogre. Mm. Yes. I, 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 I want to follow up with that because uh, I know that recently the standard organizations of Nigeria mm. visited your, yes. your, your, your outfit. So let's see what happened. You know, with um, the COVID-19 pandemic, mm. you know, when it started out there outside the country, and along the line, we realized that what is essential is hand sanitizer. Mm. So we quickly asked ourselves, we are about 50 staff. And the first thought of the leadership is how to protect our staff. Yeah. And one of the ways is how we do we keep them clean mm -hmm. as they come. We, mm -hmm. don't we don't infect one another. Mm -hmm. And the thought of hand sanitizer. 
actually came. You know, the hand sanitizer was even pushed before the washing of hand. Mm. And so we decided, okay, what do we do? We decided to go into hand sanitizers, basically first and foremost to protect our staff. Mm. And um, one staff taking it home, another taking it home, and the pressure became more now. People wanting us to pick from us. So we decided to produce for the public. Yes. And then one day we got a call from Standard Organization. We don't know how they found out we were doing hand sanitizer. And they came in, the state coordinator came in on behalf of the DG to come and acknowledge and appreciate what we have done to help in uh, managing the pandemic in the country. Mm. Also gave us a standard and encouraged us to maintain the standard mm. that we are doing. And so it was very encouraging mm. to have that. It was an intervention work yes. we were doing, but we found out that is appreciated by even the body that regulates standard. Mm. And they were encouraging us to go fully into it, but um, we told them it to go against the mandate for which and we are established. Are established. But this is like an intervention. There's a crisis in the country and there's this confusion. And so we decided to play our own role, especially that you see substandard products. Mm -hmm. Most people were buying uh, antibacterial hand sanitizers, mm -hmm. you know, and they were not because it's supposed to be alcohol-based mm -hmm. and must be a minimum of 60% of alcohol, mm -hmm. between 60 and 90% of alcohol-based. Mm -hmm. And that is when you can be guaranteed that it will destroy the, the COVID-19 virus. virus. Yes. And I can guarantee that ours is 83%. Mm -hmm. Any day, any time. Since we have an in-house laboratory, that we can check our products. And so we're very comfortable and sure of what we give out. Mm -hmm. Earlier you mentioned the fact that um, you have to take on the friendship kind of leadership style. Yes. And then again, there are times where the friendship leadership style will not work yes. for some circumstance. Mm -hmm. So uh, give us a background a bit with examples, how you applied the two. At what point is one supposed to bring up the bossy leadership style? <laughs> and at what <laughs> time point are you supposed to adopt the friendship leadership style with percentages? You know, the, the human mind is very funny. Mm. When, as a boss, you become friends with your staff, sometimes they take you for granted. And um, gradually you see complacency coming in. And um, if you don't notice that early enough and intervene, the focus will be destroyed. You know, you have a target. And I have a firm belief that once there is indiscipline mm. of any category, you will miss your target. And I'm a disciplinarian anyway. And so um, when I notice that, and that is where the God factor comes in, I believe so much in praying most times in the morning for each of the staff. Mm. So much that when I enter in the morning, I look at you, I can predict whether you have problems or not. Mm. And to a level of 70, 80%, I might be right. And so when they start playing pranks, you know, as a leader, you need to go around, check, and then where is this person? They tell you he's there, and you check he's not there. <laughs> he's already communicating something that they are trying to play. And, you know, there's this conspiracy of uh, secrecy. Mm -hmm. Staff want to cover for, for one leader. another. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so you come in. And so at that point, I bring in the firmness. And the firmness, um, I don't know how the staff got to, but they know at which point they are crossing the line. Okay. Mm -hmm. Firmness, now want to go practical. Yes. Do you apply query at such points or what tools do you apply? Um, I rarely query okay. because I've been able to put the staff under check get, get to that level of understanding mm -hmm. me understanding them and them understanding me so once i make a statement they already are clear that i'm losing that friendship i'm getting to the other side of firmness all i need to do is just to talk 
and it settles it. So they understand the language. Oh, very the well. Tune, very either well. Either the bossy or the French. Very tune. well. Very, very well. And sometimes they will start touching each other and telling one one another. I have a few of them that sometimes I will query them for not greeting me in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> they would tell me that they saw my face. It wasn't looking too good. Mm. So they decided to stay off. So that is the level we have been able to reach. Um, query sometimes, I know a staff at one point would tell you, well, is it not query right? I will answer you. So when you get to that, it's just like beating children. Mm -hmm. When you beat to a point, the child is ready. Mm -hmm. Once he commits an offense, he's waiting for you to beat you. And can predict the yes. Thing. So okay. when you allow the staff to predict you through query, then you are going to miss it. Okay. Now uh, it's really interesting because I, I was I was trying to find out uh, uh, while you were talking about your uh, how you do whether you do queries or you draw them close, you reprimand by word of mm. of mouth and and uh, and like. It, it reminds me of some of the kinds of leaderships and styles that uh, people would want to use in order to achieve organizational goals and objectives. Mm. Well, we, we will talk about that uh, very shortly. We are going to go out on a break, and then when we return, you, we will come back with uh, some of those leadership styles mm. that you would uh, possibly have used in the course of your life as uh, a leader. So, viewer, don't go away. We shall be back very shortly after this break. Leaders and the Lead shows every Tuesday and Saturday by 7.30 p.m. on Equa Television Africa with repeats on Thursdays and Mondays 1 p.m. Keep watching Leaders and the Lead on Equa TV Africa. It's by my 14th June 2020, Equa TV will feature Panam Bande on her live worship concert titled by my spirit time 7 p.m we invite you as you watch her on facebook and youtube my name is donald Weze. i invite you to join us as we celebrate jesus with panam bandit hello my name is hassan danjuma and i'm inviting you to Panambande's live worship concert tag by my spirit. You can watch us at Equa TV Africa, YouTube, and Facebook. Come and be part of what God is doing in this generation. God bless you. Hello, blessed people. I invite you to come and worship with us as we watch the live concert of Panambande tagged by my spirit on the 14th of June 2020 by 7 p.m. You can watch on Equa TV Live or on the social media handles at YouTube and Facebook. Be blessed as you watch. My name is Joyce Yakwari. I'm specially inviting you to the live worship concert of Panam Bande, the winner of the 2019 talent show, which will be live on Facebook and on YouTube. You can join uh, you can join the watch party on Facebook at ETWA TV and also on YouTube, Equa Television. Only if you subscribe to the YouTube channel, you can watch. Don't be left out on this amazing program of beautiful music from our talent show winner 2019. Please subscribe to us. Hi everyone, my name is Joyce Jakada and I'm inviting you, yes you, to the live worship concert tag by my spirit with Panam Bandi, the winner of the Equa Talent Show 2019, which is coming up on the 14th of June 2020 at 7 p.m. You can watch live on Equa Television, Facebook and YouTube at Equa Television. Don't miss out. It promises to be awesome. The Midday Show live on Equa Television every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. 
with repeats on Monday by 10 p.m., Wednesdays by 9 a.m., and Fridays by 1 p.m. The Midday Show, live only on Echo TV Africa. Keep watching Equa Television Africa for wonderful and inspiring episodes of The National Talk every Thursday and Friday by 8 p.m. with repeats on Friday by 1 p.m. and Saturdays at 8.30 a.m. Keep watching National Talk on Equa Television Africa. Welcome back. If you're just tuning in, this is Leaders on the Lead, and we have a pharmacist, Jonathan Manyadugo, the Chief Executive Officer of the Equa Pharmacy Limited here in Jaws. And we're fielding questions and discussing on some of the leadership uh, styles and uh, how he's been able to get through the years with some of those uh, responsibilities that uh, he has had to grapple with as a leader in the various uh, uh, cadre that right. he has had to to work on. Well, this is to also tell our viewers uh, that uh, by 8 o'clock in a few minutes, I guess we are going to uh, open the phone lines so you can call in and uh, contribute your thoughts uh, towards this uh, discussion and where there is a need to give us some pieces of advice. Well, we shall oblige uh, you that. But I want to advise also that before you can get through to talk to us, reduce the volume of your television set and uh, if you must uh, allow it then you move away from the tv set so that we can talk with you directly through your phone again directly through your phone we have had uh, a lot of problems with people coming calling in and then you hear your voice at the background and <coughs> uh, interferences uh, do occur and we're not able to discuss properly so that's our advice for you tonight, that you call in, but make sure your volume is very low. That's your television set. Volume is low. Now, uh, and I'm so eager to get uh, some of the ideas when it comes to follow that he has gathered over the years when it comes to followership. Uh, he has been a leader at some point and you've been responsible to some persons or some boss of higher cadre. Mm -hmm. and, and what kind of leadership style did you adopt at some point? Most times we would expect, expect or you prefer, we prefer that you paint or bring up real life scenarios mm -hmm. so that we can help our viewers to understand your followership style and what to use, what style to use when they are faced with such circumstance. Well, I came in, I worked with two directors before I became a director. But I have a principle in life. Your leader is there by God's appointment. And what is expected of you is loyalty. To be loyal to your leader. And I hope my immediate past director is listening. I was committed to him 100%. I had no reason to question his authority and I have one assurance in my life that whatever goes wrong in the organization, he will be accountable, not me. Mm -hmm. And so I was always available for any assignment and he, he really tutored me through because he didn't limit me to the office I was in and I was al always there. And I never complained I'm, and I, I'm glad he's alive. And I'm sure he's listening to me. And Equa TV was there when we did uh, send forth for him at the center. And I remember saying that he was a perfectionist. So when he gives you assignment, um, I go in and try to think like him. Mm. I just believe a follower should try to understand his leader very, very well. And at a point, staff felt he would never reject any proposal from me. But... They don't know it was with a cost. 
And that cost was to try and really follow and understand him very well. So when he gives me an assignment, I try to think like him and go beyond what he has even told me so that I don't have to go back again. Yes, uh, 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 pharmacist, this sounds like uh, uh, you, you had a, a, a leader who was a pace-setting leader, you know, the pace-setting style leadership, mm -hmm. where the leader will now set up a, 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 a bar and says, this is what we want to achieve. Mm -hmm. And uh, possibly regardless of what staff or the, those that are being led felt, mm -hmm. this is the bar, we mm -hmm. just have to, to get mm -hmm. it done. Uh, isn't that uh, bringing in some bit of uh, diminishing return? Because sometimes fatigue comes on, on the lead and uh, they, they, they begin to say, why is this ogre driving us this hard? We need to relax. Uh, we have uh, lives to live. We have families to keep. But every time work, 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 work. Isn't that uh, something that brings a diminishing return on what you're trying to achieve? Well, that is why the follower also we have to rely on God. You know, it's not just the leader, but the follower, like I told you, I made it a point of duty to even cry out to God on my leader. And um, because I took time to understand him, mm. I don't actually, I've, I've not given energy to complain because I know that is what I must do. And so I just see, and I know he has a target to meet. Mm. He has, he's also accountable somewhere. So on that basis, uh, I didn't, but yeah, it can cause fatigue, and I know a number of times staff will say, oh, guy is calling. What is he calling me for again? Mm -hmm. And you see that they are very worried. And I'll say, just go. Just what is it? Oh, he's telling me to do this. It's difficult. This is how you go about it. This is how I'm going. It's simple. All right. And uh, the lines are open, and uh, we can now begin to field uh, uh, questions and contributions from our viewers even as this program, Leaders and the Lay, is uh, on. And uh, I guess that uh, we shall begin to get uh, some calls very shortly. Valia. Well, um, I will take you up. Let's have a bit of experience when it comes to church leadership and church followership. Well, have you I, heard? I, I have one coming uh, in. Okay. Hello? Hello? Yeah, good evening. Who is on the line, please? This is Leaders on the Lead. My name is Shirley Zaka. I'm calling from Makodi. Okay, how is Makodi this evening? Fine, thank you. Uh, I quite appreciate your platform. Your guest is somebody I have known over the years. Okay, who is the lady talking, please? I, I would love I would love you to to introduce yourself properly since uh, you know him very well. He he might want to 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 take a recap and know who is talking to him. Okay, my name is Shelly Zaka, but your guest used to know me as Shelly Tanko, as a student of Equa Secondary School, Faden Kershi. Okay. He tr yeah, he okay. discipled me for the discipleship for the baptism class in Equa Secondary School, Faden Kershi, in the year 1995. Okay, go ahead. So, uh, share your thoughts with us. You are talking to your teacher now. <laughs> yeah, I, I just want to ask this question because this is a senior friend I have lost contact with and I appreciated meeting him on this platform. Okay, go ahead. Uh, in terms of, I want to bring it back to the home front. Mm -hmm. Now, not uh, in terms of... Uh, office leadership yes now given the difference between what used to be obtainable back in the years and the fact that we have a lot of factors to contend with now as parents you know the, the social media and so many other things passing on godly convictions to our children mm -hmm. what is the best approach now for christian parents okay I, I am sure that uh, the pharmacist is going to respond uh, very shortly to that. Thank you very much. And um, you are reminding me of the days in Fadan Karshi. Mm. I started work there a year after the school was established. And I took it upon myself to participate with the fellowship there. Uh, thank you very much. Well, the only way now, especially now with the social media, one, as a parent, you must appreciate that 
um, what young people or children are going through now was not the same with our own time. Sure. Mm -hmm. Our own time was just a black and white TV, no video, nothing. <laughs> so no you internet. Uh -huh, no <laughs> internet. So you just wait for the last program. You doze and wake up, you doze and wake up. For me, growing up in Kano, you listen to them Kwairo, Mama, and Shata, you know, and you have to wait. So it's not the same. So parents must appreciate that. And I think that is the departing point between parents and children nowadays. But the major thing is parents to live by example. All right, parents to live by example. Another yeah. call is just coming in, sir. Let me see whether we can get it. We lost it. We lost it. Well, go, go on. Well, you see, the children, they live with you at home. They stay with you and everything. So you can preach the Bible from morning till night and even till the next day you do all night. But the way you conduct this yourself, what you do, the parents, the way you talk to one another, how you do things, is what shapes their life. So where you have parents that live carelessly, I, I know I, ha I had a cousin who said, well, he lives a careless life, but he has taken his child to an equa primary school. At least the, ch the, the school will shape in his, his child. Mm. And that is not true, and that is very wrong. So the parent is the first teacher, the first pastor, everything to a child. Mm. And so when the child is confronted with so many issues, what does he see in his parents? Mm. That is what matters. Okay. Uh, I, I, I just lost that call, but uh, you just made a statement that is really, really uh, important to us. The way parents uh, uh, give tutelage mm -hmm. to their children. Sometimes it's, it's, it's like they are shaking responsibilities. And in leadership uh, uh, context within which, okay, this one is coming in. Hello? Hello? Uh, it's on hold. It's on hold. Let's see. Well, now, parents parents like to shake responsibilities as leaders in the home. And uh, it, it gives room to all kinds of little, little things happening. And uh, the purpose for which even the, the family is, mm. is established in the first place is, is, is defeated. I think the church needs to play a very significant role. Over the years, what I have noticed is, um, you notice people are very diligent, very good, very hardworking in their places of work. Mm -hmm. But in the church, they are non-challenged. Hmm. A call They're is just coming. A call is just coming. Non-challenged. Hello? Good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. Who is on the line, please? This is Leaders and the Lead. Okay, how is Kaduna this evening? Hello, I can hear you. Okay, now share your thoughts with us, please. <laughs> okay. Uh, I I want to appreciate the person meeting us today. Okay. Uh, it means you uh, You have been doing a nice job. And probably uh, applying some of the principles of leadership. Go ahead. The one thing I want to to, to, to find out uh, in in Asia, I don't know. Some places don't tolerate uh, 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 Okay. If workers come together to start fighting for 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 some of the benefits they want to attain, they are not considering uh, the sales of, of the product. How would you handle uh, such situation, especially like uh, in your place where you produce jobs? Okay, is that all? That is all for now. Okay, thank you very much. He will say, sir. Uh, let's let's see whether we can get another call so that he can join the two together and then give you and some proper answer. Issue, all right, we'll do that. He, I'm sure he's, he has listened in and will respond. Sure. Yes. You sure what? Incentive and union. Hello. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Okay. Hello. Hello. Oh. Okay. 
um, issues of incentives and uh, unionism, especially in an organization like yours. I'm glad to say that I resigned from government to come to EQUA. And I'm glad I came to EQUA because EQUA has a way of looking at you as a human being. I was in government, I was on duty, I lost my sight, I went through an operation. Nobody bothered to look for me. They will look for you, sir. I, I am sure. <laughs> yes. Hello? 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 Good evening. Yes, good evening. I can hear you. Yes, who is on the line, please? Hello? I can hear you. Go ahead. Share your thoughts with us. Oh, he's called off. Ah, okay, another one. Hello? Hello? Yeah, hello? Hello, this is Leaders of the Lead. Yeah, hello? Yes, hello, good evening. Yeah, this is Sasha calling from Wanam State. Sorry, the name again? Yeah, this is Sasha calling. Haja from Wanam yeah. State. Okay. Yeah, okay, go ahead and share your thoughts with us. Yeah. Hello, go ahead. I'm so grateful to be watching in fact television and television every night. We give God the praise. I'm so grateful because to, watch it, to be watching over television every day in television because we, down here in, we don't have paper television, we don't have paper church. Mm. I only uh, work this with them in television. We listen to a program mm. and so that is so grateful to me. So okay. I, I, I appreciate all this with you in television. So please, keep on. Thank, Thank you very much for calling. All right. Well, quickly, what leads to unionism is lack of listening ears of the leaders to the followership. Mm -hmm. You know, the resident doctors are threatening to go on strike. It's a very topical issue now. If you follow the trend of argument, mm. they are going on strike because those who are supposed to listen to them refuse to. Mm -hmm. or made commitments that they are not keeping to. Mm -hmm. And so um, EQUA has a structure that you give opportunity to down, to down to the lowest, if indeed there is anybody that is lowest <laughs> in the organization. I know that uh, cleaners here walk to the president's office to talk to him. Mm -hmm. They walk to the general secretary's office to talk to him. I mean, that is the highest level of leadership. Mm -hmm. And so, um, even though the conditions of service disallows unionism, but you know, when you push a person to the wall, whether you approve it or not, they will have a way of coming together to actually do unionism. But I think what I believe is when you give listening ears to your followers, the issue of unionism will not be there. And in terms of incentive, like I was saying, I found out in Equa it's even embedded in the conditions of service. Yes. It's encouraging that where a staff is having health challenge, you are encouraged even from the organization to render help and support to that organization, which mm. is rare. My own is just for my head in the hospital to come even find out how, my, how, how I was doing. He didn't. Nobody even visited. And it was on duty. I lost my sight. Mm. And, and so you can find out that for me, coming from that angle to this place, I see Equa as a wonderful place that cares for workers and is always there doing one thing or the other. Mm. So, well, but, you know, the other aspect of the followership is, you know, there are some that you never satisfy them. Even when you sacrifice yourself, you give your everything to them, they are always there to complain. Mm. And people like them, you should be able to manage them. And as a leader, if you take to heart what they are doing and what they are saying, you might find out that you will not temper justice when it has to do with them. And quickly, let me talk. You see, leadership is about fearing God, mm. it's about honesty, and it's about justice. Mm. Mm. If that plays very well, honestly, you don't have problem of unionism coming in any way. Even if it is there, you have a good working relationship with them. 
Mm, let's see whether this call will come in. Hello? Hello? It's gone silent again. Well, God with man is a success in everything that uh, one finds himself doing. I am sure that uh, uh, one aspect that uh, I would have loved us to talk about is uh, uh, the authoritarian style of leadership. Even though we have discussed uh, the pace setting style, mm -hmm. but uh, in organizations where you find people, uh, diverse people with diverse uh, uh, backgrounds and interests, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes uh, the authoritarian style comes to play so that you can get the, the organization's uh, vision and mission uh, uh, as being successful in uh, as it is being executed. So, the Equa, uh, the Equa Pharmacy Limited, the COVID-19, and, uh, 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 hello? Hello? Oh, lost it again. Now, are you into research? If you are, what and what and what are you researching into that would be beneficial to to your customers now let me use that word your customers okay you know the government is talking about reopening churches and um, immediately we've deployed the quality control department to start looking at um, what chemicals do you use for fumigating our churches mm -hmm. you know there's this argument that you have 30 minutes in between services and um, you are expected to fumigate the the, the the auditorium before the next service will take place. All right, hold, uh, hold on there. Hold on there. Sorry. Let me see what I can get this. Hello? Hello? Yeah, good evening. Good evening. This is David Dalladi Christopher speaking from Pidamaya. Mm. All right. Uh, David Dalladi. Okay, you bear my father's name, so I'll call you dad. <laughs> okay, sir. Okay, good evening. You're welcome to Leaders on the Lead. What do you have for us? Okay, sir. So I actually want to talk about uh, the aspect of uh, leadership in place of solo worship. Um, my question goes directly to your guest. Okay. Actually, it's an uncle to me. Okay, go ahead. It's all right. My concern is when a leader has a faith, okay, so mm -hmm. he set a standard, which you know that standard is ungodly. Let me say. Mm. So, and he demands his followers to follow that state, or to reach that state. Um, based on what he said, like, you should follow your leader in everything he said. Mm -hmm. Should you, you know, go with the leader because that thing is not going to be revived, or you should try to say no in that aspect. That's my concern, because most of the time you have some of the leaders who are some of the peace they are setting, is not godly, is not really, is contradicting what the word of God is saying. Mm. So should we go with them or we should say something or we should do something different? That's where I want you to talk about. Okay. With respect to that scholarship. Thank you, sir. All right. Okay, thank you. David, it's good to hear from you. It's a while. Um, you know, when I talk about loyalty, I'm talking about loyalty in terms of the objectives mm -hmm. and the aims of the organization. Again, um, another one coming in. I'm, I'm really very sorry, but hello? <laughs> it's cut off again. Go ahead. Yes. So when you are employed, you sign an agreement that you are abide by the tenants and conditions of service of the organization. Mm -hmm. And so your loyalty should be in that perspective. Mm -hmm. um, when your leader wants to hit that objective, it's incumbent on the followership to be loyal. Yeah. But when a leader is digressing, and that is why there are conditions of service mm -hmm. that sets and guides whatever work you do. And the problem we have is most people don't understand and don't want to take time to understand what guides their work. Mm -hmm. And so they, they run into crisis when you expect them. And we know in organizations you don't just talk verbally, you write. Mm. And so it gives you an opportunity to also mean it back 
and it, it exempts you. Clearly, I, I will not be a party to telling you to follow your boss to do what is wrong. Obviously, we don't have that encouragement. But the issue is, if I have a leader that wants me to do wrong, what do I do? That is where also the God factor comes in for a follower. Mm. Take that leader to God in prayer. Okay. It works. It works. The problem is when we have a leader that is tough, we start talking around, telling A, telling B, telling C, and that will never solve our problem. Mm. Vale. So what should, what should be the way out if you're faced with such a leader? You, 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 you encourage that people should not talk about that leader. Mm. What, what should you do? What uh, followership style should you adopt? You talked about the God factor. Yes. What other followership style should you adopt at that point? Um, you see, when you join an organization, your initial stand determines who you are. And you know, leaders, they look at their followership. Mm -hmm. If you come in and your leader looks at you and you look like somebody that the end justifies the means, he will turn towards you. So number one, once you go to a place, you are a believer, take your stand. Let everybody know whom you are. That is one. Two, the prayer is very important. Mm -hmm. And then three, be very careful. Don't be rude. You can calmly and gently apologize to your boss that you can't do it. Mm. Mm. But when you are rude, well, it's in subordination. He will punish you. So at what point are you supposed to bring in the writing? You talked about writing, that you can yes. put to writing mm -hmm. uh, some of your demands, some of your claims, if you don't want to. No, 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 no. You know, what I'm getting at is, um, depending on the level of um, the car that the staff is, you know, your GM here will not just call you and say, Vali, I'll go and do this. Most times he mean it. Uh -huh. And that is what protects people. Mm. So you mean it back. It's a document that is there for life. Mm. Uh -huh. But people are afraid, um, if I write my ogre will do this and will do that. No. So it vindicates you. Okay, I, vindication has to, to, to come to play. I, I, I hate to say that time has caught up with us, and uh, we, we, we will not be able to take any more of your calls and contributions. We do hope that uh, next time uh, you would uh, make hay and, and call in uh, to help us uh, do this thing together. Uh, to our, our guest, we'll give you just one minute to run up, and uh, it's possible you have something to tell the viewers apart from all that we have discussed. Yeah, uh, in terms of leadership in the church, I think leaders will assume a lot in the church. We think everybody in the church is rooted, and that is causing a lot of problems in the church. And especially for us in Equa, a lot of our membership don't even know Equa, and they don't understand. I listened to your phone in program, at the point you had to bring the GS to talk. Sure. And it's very clear that our members are disconnected. Mm. And personally, as a Christian education leader, that is what that office is supposed to do, to make sure that people are properly taught, mm. people are rooted. And honestly, the church is the best place to train leaders not just for the church, but for the country. Yeah. But because we take, like I said at one point, you see people very committed, they keep records, they do good work in the office. But when you go to the church, they can't even produce records. Yeah. It's a very wrong thing that if we continue at that rate, I'm glad the COVID-19 has exposed the church and we need to go back and really tutor our membership uh, as pastors, as elders, we have a responsibility. And next, as a pharmacist, it will be unfair to come on this program and not to talk about drugs. <laughs> I want to plead to the viewership there that um, you don't just take drugs without prescription. prescriptions. And even for over-the-counter drugs, we take them for granted. But I tell you, 
a number of them are poisons. In fact, every drug, you have what we call benefit-risk ratio in taking your drugs. Mm -hmm. So you weigh the benefit of what the drug will do with you and then the danger it has and at the end. So I want to plead with us, when you walk into a pharmacy, mm -hmm. insist you see the pharmacist and get advice. This today in the office, somebody came to buy some drugs and just a simple question, what time do you take it? And he was trying to be a bit offensive, mm -hmm. feeling offended. But I insisted and he was taking a diuretic mm -hmm. and I told him, sorry, just take it in the morning because you take in the afternoon. evening you keep going out in the night and you wake up with headache in the morning. So as simple as that, for buying that drug, he has paid for the counsel that I have to give him. So I want to encourage us out there. Please, I describe drugs like uh, the armory of the army. You know, the country, a country is glad to have a loaded armory. Yes. But remember some years back in Lagos, an armory exploded sure. mm -hmm. and lots of lives were lost. lost yes. That's the way I look at drugs. It's like an armory to an army. If you don't properly use those drugs, they will destroy you. So viewers out there, be careful how you take your drugs. Learn to go to the hospital. We are very lazy sometimes. We don't want to spend time to wait on the queue. Go to the hospital. When you <laughs> enter out your, in your pharmacy, insist on seeing the pharmacist for the proper guide on how to use your drugs. Well, on that note, we'd like to say thank you. Oh, oh, I would say thank you, and I would also say, say congratulations for the confirmation of an honorary cursor in pastoral studies <laughs> from <laughs> leaders and the led platform. <laughs> so the pastor of your church, I'm sure Reverend, uh, Reverend Charles, is in waiting <laughs> to do the anointing from the honorary cursor that has just been conferred on you. But we, we're, we're so grateful that you made our time to come, and we really appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right. Um, that's the lot we can take on Leaders and the Late for today. We shall come your way next time. My name is Donald Weze. Bye for now.